Welcome to the George FT TV YouTube channel. Today we'll discuss the round four review, how we went, how our plays went, and our trades for this week, which I'm very excited for. Uh, we've gone for a few mid prices this year. Some have worked, some have not. And more so last week, Windhager, what a disaster that was. But we're going to go for another one this year. And this week, actually, we're going to go for two this week because I uh, can't get enough of them. Um, and we'll get, we'll get an upgrade target done as well, or an, up, an upgrade done, which should be good. About 2,285 into rank 6.1k. So round four now, this is roughly where you know where your team's at. We're in a much better spot than last year. There's better teams out there for sure with better cash gen that might not even be ranked around where I am, but even further below, but with better cash gen. Um, you know, missing a, a Jeremy Sharp or a, a Tom Brown this week really it stings a little bit, especially when you've got a Zach Reed, a Marty Hoare, Hauser stagnated, and D'Ambrosio stagnated. So, Jai Clark, the list goes on. I've still got Sexton. So, we've got issues in the cash gen, but we can fix maybe two of them this week. We're going to boost again. So, we're going to be down to two boosts after this week, which is not ideal. But what can you do? You got to do what you think is best for your team. I'm not going to update my shield because I don't care. If they did custom shields like put like a picture like a for fantasy i'd put like a nice picture of something that i like there and i think my picture in fantasy is a charizard at the moment but yeah i can't be bothered updating this shield but uh, this week we carried a lot of money in the bank and that was because the win hager traded it was a bad trade-in but yeah this was a tackle fest i think still had eight tackles toronto marshall and Seb Ross and a few others, they all had massive tackle numbers. So it would have been all right for Windy. Like he could have at least done a 70 this week and he would have made the 20K if he did that. So it would have been nice to hold Windy and we could have got a James Jordan to a, a Zach Merritt instead of going a Windy to Win Hager, which really stings very badly. But I think the defense has just been a mess. They're just dropping like flies in. D'Ambrosio spent a lot of time on the bench and Zach Williams had ice at the end of the game. So... It could get worse, but fortunately, best 18s will look after us this week. So, um, is what it is. But yeah, trades last week. So first was Jack Billings out, which was good for Sam Darcy. So I could not have asked for a better trade in, to be honest. Darcy made 80k. It looks really good. Don't think he'll be dropped for lob, but his time on the ground is very low. So I don't know why. I think it's in the 50s. So could have been better than that. Our other trade was um, somebody for Dempsey. I forget. We traded out somebody. Um, I don't remember. Doesn't matter. It's not important. So we got rid of... So we brought in Dempsey, which I was happy with. He made... He made 45k. He got us an 80. He's keeping the rubbish off the field. Like he kept a Cadman off the field who could do well, but you know, that's 30 points. So I'm happy with that trade in and he, he's fun to watch too. Plays North this week. So that'll be nice. So Dempsey is in for now or he's in the team. And then we went Winhager to Whitfield. Um, is there anything worse than stressing about watching Whitfield? Like whenever he has like a, a collision or somebody bumps or knocks him, you just get very nervous with Whitfield given his history so he made a little bit of money, I think. He made 8K. So we paid fair price for him, probably. Was off the field for 20 minutes, but I'm glad he came back because I was ready to uninstall if he was injured on 20 when he had that 15 to 20 minute bench stint. Um, so yeah, so those were our trades. I'm glad we got rid of Billings because I spoke about him last last week about how petrified he is of open goals and he missed two open goals <laughs> this week again so if you held him you know he could have got you a decent score so zero goals three this week uh i think missed two easy shots last week so he, he's he gets three of those goals and he's actually like not even scoring that bad but he just is petrified of of open goals for some reason and you can when he walks into an open goal, you just know, you just, I think I was just speaking to myself on TV. I'm like, he's going to miss this. And he did. So 
it's become a bad habit for him but hopefully he can fix that and he's a I'd happily trade him out this week but yeah so we'll look at our defense so she's always the uh, him and Ryan look like D1 D2 at the moment and I'll be surprised if it changes we'll see how Dacos goes bit of attention from Finn today but probably not the hardest clamp so we got through okay so uh, if you started Dacos we lost he lost 70 80 K 85 K he's lost he hasn't scored super well. What's his average in the last three? 90. It's been a disaster pick. Uh, he's very highly owned, 75%. So it's good for those who faded, but because of his high ownership, it's not as bad. Uh, Whitfield was solid. He's good to watch because he works so hard for the ball. Uh, he always wants the ball. He's always at the back of, of stoppages. When he does get the ball in defense he'll keep running harder and look for a follow-up receive so he's good he's great he's better for dt but he's a bit like nick martin where he can make some really bad like the clangers stand out a lot with him so that can happen but i'll take an 87 he plays the saints this week let's hope hopefully we get something nice from him but he did 107 post by when the giants started winning last year i want 105 plus and i'll be happy and no injuries but that's it's a long season D'Ambrosio on the bench a lot, and Zach Williams, solid, 81. Hopefully he's all good. Some reports that I think Voss said he was a bit sore or whatever, so wouldn't be surprised if they manage him at some point, but uh, wait, was it break even seven? So not ready to go just yet. And this is bad, so we should have fixed this by now. Fixed at least one of them, but because of when Hager was out, we couldn't. Um... But yeah, the midfield is excellent. Like, I, I mean, Green and Sarong and Crouch, I probably probably want like expect them to average more than what they scored today, especially Green and Sarong. But that's fine. We'll average for the year, so that's all good. Steele's been excellent. He's he looks like a top eight mid again. So yeah, been a great pick and much better than Took Miller this year. So happy we went Steele over Took. Although Took's fine too, and Bont. What's his break even? 147. So this is why I started Bond. I just can't be stuffed paying this for him. Yeah, like he'll, he'll drop a bit more probably, 147, if he doesn't go too big. But now he's got this massive 140. Well, not really that, that big. I think his DT was better, but getting him in is going to be too hard. So it can be done, but there's Merit, there's Petrarca, there's Butters that I want. So worry about getting them in. Um, and still no McKercher so McKercher scoring 50 for us was pretty lucky but I think he's actually been I think he's been overperforming in defense because if he, his efficiency has been nuts he goes into the midfield and the efficiency drops significantly so he didn't love yeah Norwood Oval for a guy that doesn't have a super strong contested game these games can happen to him where he scores 50 but look pretty lucky that he got the role changed to be honest so you take it and yeah it's not going to be super stressful not owning him I don't think although I think GMHB this week's not great but I think the fixture opens up after that yeah Hawthorne at Marvel so it's a bit better for him and then Crows at Bluntstone which is his hometown or not I don't know if he's from there but from Tassie Sanders was good. We fielded Carroll over Reed, so a lot of people would have fielded, or just about everyone would have fielded Harley Reed. And we didn't, so we lost points there, but we did get points on Captaining Heaney, which is excellent. So our captain average now is 147.5, which is very good for us. Usually it's not great the past few years, but it's been good this year. Heaney against West Coast, like fading a Gorn VC is always. Makes you a bit nervous, but the C on Isaac is beautiful. So we took that against West Coast. Uh, Grundy was good. He plays Brisbane this week. He went 200 on them last week, last year. So I have to VC him and then probably see Bont against Essendon. Steele and Green are okay. Probably avoid Sarong if Drew goes to him. And... 
I guess Sheasel's not the worst backup, even if it's a difficult matchup. Or GMHB is not the easiest ground to play at, but um, no Dacos this week either. No Heaney, so uh, Gorn into Bont. So I don't think you can go too wrong there. And your forward line, so Flanders is playing halfback, which is weird. I don't like it. I know he scored really well, but I prefer him up the ground in the midfield. So, um, I don't think, not sure DFS is up yet. Let's have a look. Okay, it's up. Flanders zero. So they put Will Graham in the midfield. And he's a rookie. That's interesting. I wonder if this sticks, this halfback role. I think wherever he plays, he'll score. Just how it is with him. Tom Power, 15 tackles, scored the 73. That's not great, but he's made 100k since we got him in. So it's been a good trade-in. And James Jordan can go. This, like, holding him for West Coast was absolute bait. Should have got rid of him this week. And we could have gotten rid of him for merit if we didn't have to deal with bloody Winhager. So lost, like, 80 points there or something. Probably, like, 60 if Winhager went, like, a 70. Uh, Dempsey good. Sexton we held to loop Darcy and Cadman and use our VC loophole. So that worked out perfectly. So it's actually a good thing for us that he got dropped, so... We'll take it. Because if we didn't have a loop, we didn't actually have a loop until Sexton got dropped, so we would have done Gorn into Heaney. And that would have meant we would have taken Gorn. So, yeah, 34 points because Sexton was dropped is great for us. We'll take it. We'll take every bit of luck we can get. Okay, so for trades this week, let's have a look at the players' break-evens. do 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 who has the low break even? So closey, if you went early on him, you're laughing. I, I just couldn't do it. Like I just wanted to. Like my bench defense bench was so screwed that I couldn't risk him not performing. But like I'd never even heard of him before this week, so wanted to see before I went there. Jerem Jeremy Sharp has negative fifty break even. You could actually go there, but I don't think I will. Could go him over Combin. Does it have projections of how much money he's going to make? Okay, so 68. I don't know, what's this? Like 70-ish average? Makes 100k. Probably the 70 to 75, maybe 80, somewhere between 70 and 80. I mean, 82 is probably, I mean, he kicked a clutch goal, so would have got a lot of points for that, but he did look good up on the wing. Just runs up and down the boundary all day. Uh, it's probably not worth it. 250 is a bit steep. I think Common's a little bit cheaper. Uh, these are dead rooks, basically Naismith, Dean... Lions, I mean, Combin negative 40. What do they average his? So it makes, if he scores 55, 65, which is unders for him. I think GMHBA is good for interceptors, so we can go him this week. Oh, Ramston's a rookie, so he, I think, is the backup ruck to make at the moment. Scored a 70. Bloody hell, there's options everywhere. Didn't really pay attention to him much. Darcy, we have Will Graham, played 50% mid, so that sounds pretty good. I don't have a good read on his profile. Where's been a good rookie? What did he score this week? 70, pretty good. Gallagher's, Gallagher's been a sneaky good rook, but it's too late for him. Uh, Lafayette, what did he score? 49. I mean, made 20k, so I think he'll keep playing... Dempsey's there. I think 260 is too late for Dempsey now. Lohman. Yeah, he's got these terrible scores in his system, so he needs to keep playing and shake them off. I think he's a fine option. I would probably... I'm sure DR will speak about him in his video, so we'll probably learn a bit, a 
bit more about him then, I'm guessing. So, see how that goes. Not much else. The Mitch George Yardis, what did he score? 100. Pretty good. He looked really good. I thought he was their best forward. Definitely their most talented forward. Buku was underscored as hell. Gave away that bad 3 or 50 or whatever it was at the end. Horn Francis is doing pretty good. I just think off the hamstrings is a bit risky for my liking. But he looks he looks really good. Pink might come back for core. He was terrible. Well, Riley Bonner. I think a few people traded him for 280, which I don't blame you for. But annoyingly, he's scoring really well, especially with fantasy. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So the ones that appeal to me are oh, Lloyd Meek is interesting. Negative 14 break even. Solo rocking. Reeves is probably no good. Plays against Wits. It kind of sucks this week. Briggs only had, I think, 13 hit outs on Wits today. Which is not great. Hmm. Okay, let's make some trades. So first trade will be James Jordan out. And... I'm more than happy to pay up unless, there's, unless there is value that I really, really like. So we'll go average here. So I really like Zach Merritt. His record against the Dogs is not good, I guess. 120, 99, 105, which is like, that's fine. But for his standards, that's below. Um, I think we'll, if there's nothing else we like, we'll, um, we'll go for Merritt. Rao is there. I think Rao will get hopefully post by like swap him for Crouch. I think he's the one I want. But as we want, uh, but is impossible to get. 159 break even. Uh, he's a hard non own because of the last two weeks he's been managed a little bit on the bench. So yeah, he's not far off going berserk. So hopefully he comes down for us, but not sure. Neil, we're not going to touch this year. We want Petrarca pretty badly. Here's a nice run of MCG games. Look at this. MCG, 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 MCG. West Coast, MCG. Unbelievable run. So round seven, we're going to target him. I don't know if we can make it happen, but there might be a way where we can help facilitate that. I don't think we'll touch Laird this, this year. Drew's going well. Libba's... And for me, I say it all the time, I don't want a 32-year-old mid, but he's proven me wrong, so that's all good. I don't think, don't think we want Anderson. I think the only Gold Coast mid I'm interested in at all is Rao. Probably not Took. Took's fine, like decent value, but not for me. All right, so Cogs is doing all right. Gordon could be one we look at post by. Uh, Nick Martin, do we get him back? Break even of 35. Well, he's only shipped 16%, so most people traded him. Yo, he's doing well. That's fine. I still hate this pick, but maybe, maybe he's fixed. Uh, his body's fixed after going to Qatar because McGovern's holding up as well. They both went to Qatar. It's good to see him play well because he's really playing well, but um, like Prime Yo, we haven't seen this for, for so long, but from a you know AFL fan perspective, it's like he's good to watch, but from a super coach and fantasy perspective, he's frustrating to not own because when Valley does well it's and you don't have it, it's pretty bad. Hewitt, nah, Finey, no. Um, it's too early for Zorko. I can't trust him to hold his, for his body to hold up, but if it does, he's going to go well. I think we'll go Nick Martin. I know we traded him out. I said I was happy to get him back in if he looks good. He looks good. He's still making bad clangers, and there's still calls for him from Essendon supporters to move up the ground because I think it's, it's debatable whether he's actually hurting you or, or not, you know, like damage per possession. 
Um, but I think they're going to keep him in the role and he might be able to grow into it and become better at it. And yeah, his time on the ground is like 95%, which is absolutely absurd. So that should hold him in good stead. So we'll make that trade. So yeah, it would have been nice to get this done. You know, we could have had a 130 merit score here last week with this money in the bank, but just the way things worked. So next trade will be we get rid of Sexton. So there's Closey and Combin. Now, do we grab both this week or do we go early on one? The one I think we go early on. Oh, uh, hang on. Do we go Closey like that? Because uh, that means we can field. Let's just go Closey for now. When I did these trades, I actually had Combin. So that means we filled Carol and Closey. Who scores more, Closey or Combin? It's probably Combin. Uh, let's go Combin. I think Combin's durability issues have been horrific, but we'll do some research on how his preseason's been. He's had a full preseason. I think he's been contact injuries as well. We'll just pick him. So I think if it was safer because of durability going on closely, but I think people will wait a week on Combin. We might be able to snare a few points if he does well and go early on him. And probably Graham as well the week next week. So we've got a plan for that. And then we could not boost, but what can we get in the rucks? Not much. Um, do you want Rowan or English? I think Rowan. Durability a bit better. Like last week I said English. Rowan looked good today. It was ideal for him though. Norwood Oval. Lots of stoppages for him to tackle and get clearances. I think probably still English, I guess, but... It's, what's the ruck split? It's not. I think it was better this week, but it's been pretty like 60-40 some weeks. But with Darcy on the bench so much, I assume it's was a bit better this week. Well, look at Lloyd Meek. You got Cherry there. How can I pass on this? So we're going to go Meek. So I already decided this. Halfway through watching the game, sent a tweet out, but... Um, I've got to be careful because I do talk myself into, into picks. So he looks really good. So 2022, he had played six games. And across those six games, he had, I think it was 64% ruck time. Whereas right now, I wonder if we can check. It's probably too early. Ruck contests and Hawthorne. Call it 77. So I've gone from 64 to 77% ruck split. They can use Ramsden and Chol to back up. So, and he averaged with 64% ruck split, 87. So now that's up to 77. So 64% to 77% ruck time. Maybe he can do 100, roughly. But he looked really good. And this will enable me to get Merritt and then possibly Petrarca the week after. For me, this this is opportunity that there's risk attached, obviously, if they want to run Reeves. But if Chow and Ramson can back him up, and let's be real, fantasy players have known Reeves cannot score for shit. Like, two games, 51 average. Like, what did he do last year? How do you even check last year? He played 21 games last year, although it was with Meek a few times, but not every time, but yeah, 67 average. I'd have to go check how much Meek played. What does it say? Please work. I well, played a fair bit. 
Hang on. Let's have a look. Played 16. Okay, so that would have affected Reeves. Sub a fair bit too. Uh, Ned Reeves. What did Reeves score? Say 21, 22, 23. No, 2023, idiot. 64, 80, 96. It's actually not that bad. Lots of hit outs, but... Hmm. Maybe we ask Hawthorne supporters for their advice on Meek. Uh, for me today, I thought he played a career best game and I don't... I haven't seen Reeves play anywhere near that level that meek did today so i think they'll keep playing meek uh, if they don't we'll have to jump off so he's negative break even so we'll know this week if he's solo or not and if he's solo i'll just run it not the best matchup against reeves but um we'll just ride the price rises and if we are in trouble we can just boost out of it while he makes money so i think it's worth the risk um I posted in Discord, a few people are on board, a few people are like, hell no, no way, it's too risky. I understand that. It'd be great to get to a Marshall, but that 250k will help us get rookies off the field. So we'll do that trade. So next week, Ambrosio down to Closey, and then a Cadman or a someone else, a House or something up to, up to Zach Merritt. Uh, maybe we need a third trade to get Graham in. So that's something we will definitely do and should be good. So um, that's it from me. Thank you for watching. Uh, we'll show you how we line up this week. So Dacos on for House. Uh, Heaney on for Caddy. So we can loop Darcy and Cadman, I guess. Uh, Darcy plays first so that's fine although I kind of want to field both just because of uh, ceiling of key forward I think that lineup is fine we can loop Wilson and Carroll so that should be good I think uh, Walsh might be back so hopefully Carroll does okay this break even is one so he's still ticking along I think Elijah Hollands is injured so maybe it's a straight swap there and then Okay, so I'm a bit worried about Williams and D'Ambrosio. assume they play this week, but found it strange that D'Ambrosio spent 20 minutes on the bench in the last and Williams had ice or whatever. Howes won't score much, so there's basically four probably that drop off here. Uh, nice, we'll just line up like that. We did that before. So hopefully everyone counts here. Rocks will count and... Maybe, maybe five count there. So maybe we just get one or two uh, tank scores. So I'll see how we go. But that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Let me know who you want to target in the upcoming weeks. And we'll see you guys in the next one.